Don in London. Hello. It's April the 30th, 2010, end of the month, and it's a May Bank holiday here in London, UK. And uh, my video is all about recovery from addiction to substance or behaviour. And I've been doing these for several years now. And uh, I'm coming up to six years sober, which is quite remarkable. Not one drink in nearly six years. And what's made that possible? Well, left to my own devices, I'd have drunk myself to death. And that's where I was heading. And somehow I got a moment of clarity. It wasn't, I don't have to do this anymore. It was, it cannot get any worse. Life cannot get any worse. And I started to understand a little bit about my addiction, that I was stuck 24-7. I didn't know how to stop. I didn't know how to stop obsessing about drink, trying to control it, forever going out, getting more alcohol, to a point where I had nowhere to go out to, and nowhere to live, and nowhere to go. And that was after going to rehab, and several months of being dry but not sober. And the difference these days from back then in the problem of trying to live life to perfection to now, which is just trying to live each day as it is and be a part of, to understand what it is to love people, be loved back and have something useful to do. And the usefulness is in what we determine as each day passes. So these days needs met, wants, forgotten often and I'm very lucky, I'm very lucky to be alive. So what was addiction for me? Well the substance as I've mentioned, alcohol, the behaviour, equally addicted to work, relationships, materialism, people, places and things. And always about trying to make my part work. And these days, if I'm lucky, I am simply a part of what is going on. And no bigger, no smaller than anybody else no more influential or powerless than anybody else. But some of the things I know these days keep me well, and that is to find balance in the moment of living now, to make room for life to happen, rather than trying to control it. And very often control makes us a prisoner, not only of what we're trying to control, but also, also for ourselves, because it narrows our path into what we think life should be. So these days, more open to what is going on around me, more open to being included, more open to the possibilities. It doesn't mean they're going to become real, because we just don't know. All we can do is be a part of life. We're not centre stage, although we are centre stage in our own lives, but we're not centre stage in terms of life revolves around us or the world revolves around us, the world revolves and we're part of it. So recovery has been a levelling experience and that has been the opening door, if you like, to recovery, that I can be part of life again. And I couldn't do it on my own, I needed help, I didn't know where to get it. I did say to myself, yes, it cannot get any worse, what do I do now? I need help and that was the moment of clarity, accepting reality as it was. But it didn't mean it was all going to be uh, joyful and happy. What it meant was there was an awful lot of hard work to do to get myself out of the deep pit of despair and depression that I was in. And keeping on doing the same old behaviour over and over again and getting nowhere, which was insanity. So I had to learn to let go of old behaviour, old attitudes and start to learn new behaviour and new attitudes. And I found, after professionals drive me out, that rehab was really good in terms of providing a roof over my head, because by that stage I was destitute and had nowhere to go, and life had just become a complete mess. But I preferred the streets to living in rehab, because the anger and the rage that came up was completely unmanageable, and I couldn't contain myself and I went out, out the front door of the rehab centre and got to the corner shop or corner store and bought a bottle of vodka, which was my retaliation 
against the previous few months of sober. Life hadn't got better. And I drank it, the whole bottle, and, you know, I spent some time completely insane and in a rage at myself for not getting the fix I was looking for. So these days, I don't fix anymore. The story got worse. It just did. But these days, I've found a fellowship which helps me. It doesn't matter whether, whether we're on the streets or living in a penthouse. It helps us deal with our feelings and emotions and learn what can be the solution on a daily basis to what is happening to us. Simple as that. What is happening now? And some life experiences cannot be solved in a day. When it comes to affairs of the heart, romance, we fall in love often very easily and falling out of love can be just as easy but sometimes we are heartbroken and sometimes we break hearts and in that it takes time to heal. And the thing about recovery is we allow ourselves the time to heal. So important, very difficult but very important that life will be difficult and then life will emerge again into a more steady and balanced outlook. And that's difficult. So what helps me? The Fellowship of AA. I talk about it. I don't speak for it. Never can, never will. Full of unique, authentic people. But the statement of intent shared at every meeting of AA I go to goes like this. Alcoholics Anonymous is a fellowship of men and women who share their experience, strength and hope with each other that they solve, may solve their common problem and help others to recover from alcoholism. The only requirement for membership is a desire to stop drinking. There are no dues or fees for AA membership. We are self-supporting through our own contributions. AA is not allied with any sect, denomination, politics, organisation or institution. Does not wish to engage in any controversy, neither endorses nor opposes any causes. Our primary purpose is to stay sober and help other alcoholics to achieve sobriety. When it talks about the primary pur purpose being to be sober, what it means is that we get enough self-esteem, or just get enough esteem, to say, well, yes, maybe we do have a right to be here still, even though we might have completely screwed our situation up. You know, life can be redeemable. It will never be the same again. And that's the same about every day. And what helps me when I can't get to meetings, or when I'm trying to share some understanding of the program, I use this book, Daily Reflections, which talks about the 12 steps of AA and the 12 traditions and for April 30th it talks about a great paradox. These legacies of suffering and of recovery are easily passed among al alcoholics one to another. This is our gift from God or from life and it is bestowal, it, it, its bestowal upon others like us is the one aim that today animates AAs all around the globe which is to share experience, strength and hope. The great paradox of AA is that I know I cannot keep the precious gift of sobriety unless I give it away, partly why I do these videos. My primary purpose is to stay sober. In AA I have no other goal, and the importance of this is a matter of life or death for me. If I veer from this purpose I lose, but AA is not only for me, it is for the alcoholic who still suffers, sharing the message with others. The legions of recovering alcoholics stay sober by sharing with fellow alcoholics. The way to my recovery is to show others in AA that when I share with them, we both grow in the grace of the higher power and both of us are on the road to a happy destiny. And for me, sometimes I wonder if it's a happy destiny and sometimes I question why I do things like these videos. And I felt that way earlier. So, you know, life is not perfect, but perfect or not its destiny is to live in the moment of now for me and not be too concerned about tomorrow to have an understanding that it can exist is good enough and that serenity prayer which helps me at times of challenge and times of peace goes like this God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change courage to change the things I can and the wisdom to know the difference for me is just for today